Welcome to Reason Workshop, class 17. We're going to go over the Maelstrom. We'll start out and cover grain table synthesis and the oscillator types. Then we'll go over the oscillator section, then routing and output, then the filter section, then the modulator section, then play parameters, then CV connections, and finally we'll have a test. So let's cover grain table synthesis and the oscillator types now. So grain table synthesis is generated by a short continuous segment of sound that we'll call grains. And each is typically 5 to 10 milliseconds long. So it's a very dynamic synthesis method that's capable of producing a wide variety of tones. Like subtractive synthesis, which we covered in the subtractor, also FM synthesis and physical modeling of uh, sounds and instruments. So let's focus on just one oscillator now. You can see the menu of different sounds. You can hit the up and down arrows, but if I just click on the LED, you'll see the menu of different sounds within these two oscillators. You have everything from bass, synth kind of sounds, or effects. And you can hear a little bit of the physical modeling there. It's like a synthesizer combined with a rain drip. So as you can hear, there's a wide variety of tones. So now let's go over the oscillator section. First you have the pitch, and that tells you what pitch the oscillator is going to play back at. You can select octave, or semitones, or sense to fine-tune the oscillator. On both those oscillators, you can turn on or off with this button. So you combine the two sounds this way, if I turn on both oscillator 1 and oscillator 2. Then there's the ADSR, which is somewhat standard at this point. Um, when we went over the subtractor, we went in great detail to this. But if I just show you how the attack is affected, so as the higher I turn that up, you'll hear more of a swell into the tone. Um, and then the decay, sustain, and the release. The decay is how long the attack takes to get to its resting point, which is dictated by the sustain knob. And then uh, release, what happens when you take your finger off of the note. Then there's the volume. The next three parameters are very important, and they control the playback of the grain table. So first of all, there's the index, and that sets the starting point of the grain table. So here we have vocoder bands, you can hear it does a sweep from low to high. If I move it up, it starts kind of in the middle. If I move it high, then you can hear it just starts at, at a, the higher point. The motion is important because that controls how fast it moves forward to the next segment in the grain table. So I move it up, listen. And then finally, shift. That changes the timbre of the sound. And really what that is is a formant spectrum. A very important thing to understand is that both of those oscillators are fed to that master output volume, and that goes into the output right and left. But they're separated and independent with this spread knob. So if I turn it all the way up, you're going to hear oscillator 1 and 2 panned out hard right and hard left. If I moved all the way to the left, then they're summed together. Let's go through the routing and the output now. So, first of all, on the front of it, on the face of the Maelstrom, you can see the lighter colored arrows that show you signal flow of the Maelstrom. 
first of all, I'll turn on the shaper, and you can see that oscillator A is going into the shaper. And now I'll uh, turn on that direction with those buttons. So by turning on those buttons, oscillator A and B are both just sent to filter 2. And you can also send those signals up to the shaper too, turning the shaper on and off with this button. And then it's also sent to its own filter. And you can also have the individual oscillator outputs too. So they're just isolated into oscillator A and oscillator B. So now there's also this audio input. I can use that audio input to process um, the audio through the shapers, through the filters, and still using the modulation section of the Maelstrom. There's all different kinds of tricks you can do. Processing drums. And the filters on the Maelstrom are extremely powerful. We'll cover more about that in just a moment. So now let's go over that filter section in more detail. So you have some new filter types. There's the low pass filter, which we've covered before. And we can turn on either keyboard control or envelope. Keyboard control is really cool because the higher that you play on the keyboard, the more the envelope is going to open up. So if I use the example of the drums processing the drums through the filter and I play it on the keyboard, look at the effect you can get. I'm just using my mouse now to show you how that works. but. Now for the other filter types, you have band pass. The comb filters are great because there's a bit of adjustable feedback within it. As you can hear it, there's a, the, a positive resonating peak where there's a boost. So check this out. I'll turn on the envelope now so you can hear uh, the filter envelope open and close in relation to the filter. And then there's also the comb minus, which is a similar thing, but with a bass cut as opposed to a boost. And then finally, you have the AM, which is amplitude modulation, actually um, like a ring modulator. The resonance controls the amount of modulation that you're adding to it. So as you turn it up, you can hear it. Pretty awesome. And both of those filter sections work the same. Now for the modulator section. I'm just going to turn off all the filters so you can just hear the oscillators and the modulator A. So first of all, you can select the destination with this toggle to be either just um, oscillator A, just B, or a combination of A and B. And if you turn it on with this button, then there's a bunch of wave types that you can select here just by clicking on the LED and dragging up and down or using the up and down arrows. To have this affect anything, you use these knobs to select the destination of that wave type to affect the oscillators in that way. Let's turn on pitch. Turn on the index. I'm just going to turn on a basic beat behind it. Now 
the difference between modulator A and B is the different uh, destinations that you can affect it. Modulator A just has pitch, shift, and index. Modulator B has a whole different set of parameters. So let's turn off modulator A. So I'm going to keep the destination to A and B, and let's try messing around with this applied to the volume. So now I'm going to have it affect the filter, and you can hear how those wave types are triggering the filters to work in time. Now the other thing you can do with modulator B is that you can assign it to affect modulator A. Check this out. So now let's go through the play parameters, and you can have velocity, the harder that you hit the keys, affect these different parameters. Um, either you can have it affect the filter envelope for how much it opens and closes, depending on how hard you hit. And while we do this, let's also turn up the pornamento and uh, take the note to one. That way we can get a gliss and like a hammer-on effect when we turn on legato. So, it's really cool. You can do some incredible sound design with this. And now we can also turn up the modulator. So, the harder that you hit the keys, the more that the modulator will turn on. What we'll also do is use the modulation wheel and assign it to control different elements. Now for CV connections on the back. So there's some fantastic CV connections. You do have the modulator outputs and you also have these modulation inputs for something such as a matrix. For all those inputs, you also have a knob to control how much, and then you have the destination for those. Specific things that I like here, the modulation wheel and the pitch bend wheel, uh, CV compatible. So you can open up matrix and with the curve, control the pitch. This is now going to the pitch bend wheel. Even though you don't see it moving, the octaves and the pitch are being set by what's happening below on this matrix. So I'm just holding down one note.